It's been a trying time for Asian Americans, with hate crimes against them surging. We asked correspondent Weijia Jiang to take a closer look at the nation's long and troubled history of persecution against its fellow citizens. As the United States struggles to open back up, Asian Americans remain anxious. As you can see, this is protecting you. Women and the elderly are taking self-defense classes. Others are arming themselves for protection. Even parents are wondering if they should keep their children out of schools. What are you doing in this country? There are 23 million Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in the U.S. And ever since the pandemic, a new poll suggests one out of every three fears they will be attacked. And thanks for giving my country COVID. Hate crimes overall increased last year by 2 percent. But hate crimes against the Asian American and Pacific Islander population rose by 146 percent. Kung flu. Many blame the previous administration's use of racist rhetoric for the rise in violence. I would like to begin uh, by announcing some important developments in our war against the Chinese virus. What comes out of the mouth of the leaders, especially the president, matters. Here at the National Japanese American Memorial in Washington, D.C., Senator Maisie Hirono of Hawaii points out we're witnessing history sadly repeating itself. You didn't create this kind of discrimination and indeed hatred, but uh, I think that he called to the fore uh, the kind of thinking that uh, some people in our country have. We have always been deemed the other, the perpetual foreigners. It's not just the pandemic. There's an economic crisis in our country. There is a political crisis in our country. Unfortunately, because of the uh, high visibility of Asian Americans being associated with the virus, they become uh, the targets. Associate Professor Lok Su teaches Asian American studies at University of California, Berkeley. She says a battered economy has always been one of the root causes for scapegoating Asian Americans. You can see this happening as early as 1870s with the conclusion of the railroad construction. You have spikes of just outraged white workers who are claiming that Chinese are taking over jobs and therefore need to be gotten rid of. As a result, anti-Chinese rioters burned down and even wiped out Chinatowns across the nation. And in 1882, the U.S. government made anti-Asian racism official with the Chinese Exclusion Act, prohibiting all immigration by Chinese laborers. It was the first federal act of its kind, barring a specific ethnic group from entering the United States, an act that was legal for 61 years until it was repealed in 1943. Right around the time that Japan became America's enemy. This day will unleash a fury on Japan. War will also unleash a deep racial hate against all things Japanese. 120,000 people of Japanese heritage were forced to give up their homes and into internment camps. Most are American citizens by birth. There is no proven guilt, not even a proven military need. After World War II, Japanese Americans struggled to regain stability. When some eventually did, their success stories led to an enduring stereotype. We tend to have this misconception that Asian Americans have made it, right? That we are model minorities. Model minority, two words that may sound positive together, but Sue explains the phrase is often used as a wedge. What it has done in the past is really pitted Asian Americans against um, other racial ethnic groups on the premise that somehow, because they have so-called the right cultural values, um, whatever they may be, they've been able to achieve. The idea that Asian Americans fared better played out in the 1980s, when Michigan's auto industry was heading to the scrap heap. The scapegoat for many, Japanese imports, as in its cars and its people, sparking a new wave of anti-Asian discrimination. 
if we could just imagine back in 1982, you know, a time when Japan was the enemy, everything wrong with America was being caused by Japan. Journalist and activist Helen Zia was working in a Detroit auto factory the same time a 27-year-old Chinese-American's name would become a rallying cry. Many people don't know who Vincent Chin is. Who was he? He was not your model minority. He hadn't gone to college. He was taking night classes. He worked as a draftsman. And he worked part-time at a Chinese restaurant as a waiter. He was really your all-American, Asian-American, Chinese-American kid. June 19, 1982. Two men, a father and his stepson, a foreman and a laid-off auto worker, beat Vincent Chin to death with a baseball bat outside a McDonald's after an argument at the nearby bar where Chin was celebrating his bachelor party. One of the bar workers said she heard what the stepfather said to Chin. He had made the remark about, yeah, because of you, we're out of work. Chin's death didn't make national news. The sentencing of his assailants did. The charge, second degree murder, plea bargain to manslaughter. The sentence, a $3,000 fine each, three years probation, no time in prison. Is it because he is Chinese? Is that what you think? I think that's what it is. Discrimination. They were given fines of less than what a used car would have cost that they could pay off at $120 a month. And the judge said, these are not the kind of men you send to jail. We want justice. We want justice. As nationwide calls for justice grew louder, both men were indicted on federal charges for violating Chin's civil rights. They were eventually acquitted. Vincent was very much the American story, the American immigrant story. And all of that was just shattered, you know, in a climate of racism. In 2012, the father apologized for killing Chin, but insisted it was never about race, something the Asian American and Pacific Islander community has heard again. He does claim that it was not racially motivated. And again. Back in March, a gunman shot up three Atlanta area spas. Among the eight killed, six were women of Asian descent. On Tuesday, the killer pleaded guilty to four of the murders and was handed four life sentences without parole. While prosecutors in one county charged him with a hate crime, those in another one did not. What do you say to critics who argue these are not crimes motivated by hate? These are just crimes of opportunity. I say to them they're not paying attention. The bill as amended is passed. In a rare moment of bipartisanship, Congress recently passed the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act, introduced by Senator Hirono and Representative Grace Ming. They hope it will make reporting a hate crime easier and give federal oversight to expedite the review process. The law is largely seen as the first step. Journalist and activist Zia says the nation needs to go much further. History shows that this is going to be more than a moment. There are renewed demands across the nation to teach Asian American and Pacific Islander history in schools in the hopes that people will see beyond the perpetual foreigner, the model minority, or the scapegoat. There really has to be a concerted, thoughtful effort to try to, to teach what America really is so that we can build a country that everybody feels like we're part of it.